I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all over the world about parenting, good communication, how to build strong family bonds, child development and education. I teach these things all through the lens of the principle self-government. And in this video, we're talking about 10 mighty manners that kids need to learn. In this video, we're going to be talking about why manners matter for our children, especially in this day and age where people don't seem to put as high of a value upon manners. In fact, some people are even congratulated for not having good manners, but they still do matter. So we're going to talk about why, and then we're going to talk about those 10 mighty manners that you're going to want to teach to your children. So why do manners matter? Well, because they actually show a regard or a respect for other people. Oftentimes when people disregard manners or don't care about using manners when they're around other people, then those people oftentimes are perceived as selfish. Now we want our children to be taken seriously in education, in business, socially, we want people to value them. So teaching them manners will help them get to that end. Manners are actually part of learning self mastery or self government, because when you you learn a manner and you follow through on it, you have to decide you care about it. You have to give yourself no answers for some things, instruct yourself to do other things. So really practicing good manners is actually evidence of a self-governed person. Manners also are a sign of someone's character. If you have good character, then usually you have good manners. When people are completely honest, about their relationships with other people and the value of the other people around them, that is actually a sign of good character. So integrity is part of good character. When we're honest about the value of other people and treat them accordingly, that means that we are living with character in our mindset and our relationships with those other people too. So even though there are many people around the world in society right now, especially in Western culture in the United States, who are congratulating each other on their wild behaviors, their rudeness, their disregard for other people and their selfishness. Really, we do know that in the end, being selfish does not lead to happiness and it does not help with any relationship. So why not practice manners with all of your relationships and with everyone that you know, so that you can have your most important relationships really excel as well. So this is why manners are going to be vital teaching for children. Obviously we shouldn't be taking somebody's lack of manners personally. There are some people that don't get a proper manners training. And sometimes when our children are little, they don't have good manners, but this is because they haven't been trained yet. So don't take them personally. Don't get emotional about people's manners or lack of manners, but just diligently and continually train the children to recognize when manners are appropriate and how to use them. If you've already subscribed to this channel, then you know that everything on this teaching self-government channel is all about taking deliberate action so that each person can feel like they are in control of themselves so that they actually have the opportunity to learn and practice self government. Well, these 10 mighty manners that we're going to be talking about next all relate to self-government. So as we discuss the mighty manners, we'll also determine how these mighty manners can be learned through the teaching self-government program. Number 10, look at someone in the eyes when they are talking to you or when you are talking to the M. Having good eye contact is a sign of confidence. It also shows respect and a willingness to understand another person's point of view, even if you happen to be the person who is talking. It just opens the door for good understanding, connection, and good civil discourse. With all of the skills of self-government, especially those four basic skills, the first step of all of the four basic skills of self-government are to look at the person. When you look at the person, you show a readiness for understanding, you show you're teachable, you show humility, but you also are saying, 
I am ready. Number nine, don't talk back discuss instead. Probably one of the rudest things that you can do is interrupt a person or talk back to a person when they are trying to tell you something or explain something to you. So teach your children not to talk back to you. Do not tolerate back talk. If someone talks back to you and then you talk back to that person, that is you tolerating back talk. If someone talks back to you, that is something that they would need to be corrected for. And there's a certain way to go about doing that so that it's calm and productive. But we also want to point them toward using a certain skill that will help them be understood without talking back. So that skill is another one of our four basic skills. The skill is disagreeing appropriately. When you disagree appropriately, you wait until the other person is finished talking. This requires patience, which is also another sign of good character. Number eight, ask permission to inconvenience another person. So this would be saying, excuse me, can I talk to you about something? Or excuse me, I need your help with something. Interrupting someone, expressing that you know they might be in the middle of doing something else, or they might be focused on trying to accomplish something else, shows consideration for them. It shows that you don't think that you are the most important person in the room. When people feel acknowledged, they're much more likely to help you. So you'll get better results for whatever it is that you're asking help for, but also it will show the person that you respect them. One of the four basic skills is a skill called accepting no answers. When someone is in the middle of something else, then that is essentially a no answer if you need that person's help. The way around that is to use the disagree appropriately skill. When you are going to interrupt that person or ask if you can inconvenience them, that is the perfect start to using your skill disagreeing appropriately. Number seven, apologize. Humility is the sign of a great character, a person who is fully honest with their own progression and their own self-government. When a person is truly humble, they feel bad if they have misrepresented themselves or someone else or have hurt somebody, whether it's accidental or on purpose. Even if something was an accident, you should apologize. In fact, with my children, I remember having conversations with nearly all of them when I would say, you need to apologize, and they would say, okay, mom, may I disagree appropriately? And I would say, yes. And they would say, I know you want me to apologize to so-and-so for this happening, but it was an accident. And then I would say, even if it's an accident, you should apologize for it. In fact, especially if it's an accident, you should apologize. Why would you not apologize for an accident that hurt or inconvenienced another person? That got them thinking and they went, oh, okay, that's a good point. Apologizing actually opens the door to more communication and connection. It's super helpful. When you apologize to another person, you're basically accepting a consequence. And a person cannot be self-governed without being willing to accept their consequences. We have to give people that opportunity, which means we have to invite the environment where apologies can happen. Number six, keep a calm face. So often we allow our faces to express our frustration, annoyance, boredom, all of those types of things when other people are talking to us. When we are having a conversation with someone else or they're expressing themselves to us, we need to make sure that we show them we care about what they have to say by focusing in and keeping our face nice and calm. Number five, forgive those who bother you, hurt you, or inconvenience you. Did you know that it's good manners to be forgiving? It is. This is why so many people instruct their children to tell someone, it's okay, I forgive you, or that's all right, when somebody apologizes. Because it's not good for you to hold on to the bad feelings anyway. And it is a sign of charity, which is part of a good character. If you can tell someone, I'm okay moving on from this. You may not wanna say it like, that's okay. But if you can't say that to another person, then, then does that mean you're holding on to the idea that it was not okay? I'm talking about, you know, minor infractions. Obviously, there are a few things that might be done to a person that absolutely are not okay. So then you would just change your forgiveness to be, I appreciate your apology. Thank you for taking the time to do that. But help coach your children through how to actually accept an apology from another person. 
Number four, answer questions with more details. Did you know that it's actually rude to just be really short when you answer your questions? So when somebody says, how was your day? Fine or okay. That's actually rude because when somebody's asking you a question, they're trying to start a conversation. If you're socially aware enough, you would have known that. So what you should say is, you know, it was a pretty good day. This is what happened and this is what happened. And you might give a little bit more information so that you can start a conversation. It is good manners to start a conversation. And if someone tries to start one with you, it's good manners to continue the conversation by giving more information. Number three, see when someone needs your help and either give help without being asked or ask them how you can help and serve them in some way. When you're open-minded to giving service to another person, they feel valuable. In fact, that just improved your relationships tenfold. So make sure that you don't just think about yourself and what you want and what others are doing for you, but be thinking what you can do for somebody else. Number two, don't be too competitive about games, sports, fairness, stuff like that. We have to have good sportsmanship, right? That means you need to be okay if somebody else wins. Now this goes back to the teaching self-government skill of accepting a no answer. When a person can accept a no answer, they can stay calm, say, okay, I didn't win on that one, and then drop the subject. There are some people that get so wrapped up in being the best or having to prove themselves in some way that they actually behave in a way that's very rude to others. No one's gonna like playing games with you or doing a sport with you if you have to be the winner every time. That's just too controlling and it's emotionally manipulative too. Number one, stay calm. This is definitely the number one most important manner that you can adopt for yourself. When a person is calm, when someone else is expressing something to them, when they can adapt to a situation and not vent their anger and frustration out on other people, then people want to be with them, work with them, help them in other ways. It actually creates an environment where everybody feels like they're safe and comfortable. I would love to help you with your calmness. In fact, since you stayed to the end of this video, I would like to give you my free calm parenting toolkit. It's a mini course all about calmness. There are 10 lessons for calmness in the toolkit. If you go to teachselfgov.com slash toolkit, you can have the Calm Parenting Toolkit for free. Click on the link to that video now. I'll see you there.